polluted. The gaseous polluted starting from carbon dioxide all the way up to ozone. And I said, the more deadlier ones are the suspended particulate matter. Suspended particulate matter. And in yesterday's class, I had also told you that soot is also an example of particulate matter. Yesterday, remember, black carbon and the energy impact from glacier. So that is also an example of suspended particulate matter. <coughs> so what is an SPM? It's a term for a mixture of solid particles and, and liquid droplets formed suspended in air. And the more damage is usually done with the solid particles. Okay, all these small, small uh, particles that uh, that escape from the vehicle exhaust, they are usually solid particles. Based on the size, that's a more or less a universal classification, not just in India. We have two sizes of suspended particulate matter, PM10 and PM2.5. So the way it is written is 10 watt, 10 micrometer, and 2.5 m. 2.5 micrometer. So micrometer means 10 power minus 6. Okay, so 10 micrometer means 10 into 10 power minus 6 meters. So which is 10 into 10 power minus 3 millimeter, which is 10 power of a thousand. <coughs> Is 10 part of a thousand and PM 2.5 similarly means 2.5 part of means you divide a millimeter into thousand parts and in that it occupies a space of 2.5. Okay, so that's your PM 2.5. Now it, both are dangerous, but in between these two, that is PM 10 and PM 2.5, PM 2.5 is more dangerous. You can even make note of it. So this guy is more dangerous. Guy is more dangerous. Now, the reason why this guy is more dangerous is if you have, uh, you know, once again, you know, going back to maybe 8th, 9th, or 10th standard biology, if you look at our lungs, when we inhale something, the, uh, what should I say, to cut a long story short, the basic functional unit of lungs, where the pure, impure um, exchange happens between the pure and an your air, they have very, very minute pores called as alveoli. Yeah, very good. Alveoli, excellent. Shita. Alveoli. So, alveoli are extremely small pores where the exchange between those pure and impure, the blood purification happens. The, when we inhale, oxy, oxygen goes and it goes, gets mixed with the blood, and the carbon dioxide is exited from the blood, comes to the lungs, and it exhales. Yeah, so it goes and blocks them. So once it goes and blocks them, what will happen? The lungs functionality comes down. The lungs functionality comes down. So which means the same thing, interestingly, the same thing happens when someone is smoking a lot of cigarettes. Yeah, when someone is smoking a cigarette, a lot, a lot of particulate matter goes and deposits in the lung. Which means if you stay in a polluted city, it is same as smoking X number of cigarettes. Now, what is that X will depend upon how polluted the city is. Good. So, uh, yeah, PM 2.5, I have mentioned here some of the respiratory diseases for the irritation and inflammation. Irritation and inflammation. So, and it also causes an occupational disease called pneumoconiosis. It's an occupational disease primarily caused due to inhalation of SPM belonging to the 2.5 micrometer level. Usually, in people who are dealing with dust, which could be construction, brick, tin, etc. Okay, so this is a major occupational disease. Uh, in US, for example, this was considered as a very important occupation. Okay, pneumoconiosis. And in US, they also found that this PM 2.5, you know, the emission uh, or its uh, the major contribution of PM 2.5 is what is called as fugitive. There is a concept called fugitive particulate matter. What it means is, imagine you have an industrial process. Okay, last class I also showed you a simple power plant path. You know how the air goes, and eventually it gets uh, uh, air is uh, let out through the chimney. But sometimes there may be leaks in the path. So before the air is purified fully, 
some of the uh, emissions are emitted accidentally because of poor maintenance so such dust or such particulate matter are called as fugitive particulate matter so in case something comes up hey what is fugitive particulate matter nothing the normal particulate matter of the same size 2.5 and 10 micrometer which are getting accidentally emitted because of poor operation and maintenance of a industry as it was that okay now the sources of uh, pm the last part is sources of particulate matter so we have two sources one is the natural so of the sources and the other is anthropogenic sources the natural sources volcanic ash volcanic ash in fact is a key to the particulate matter you have seen any video on uh, discovery of national geographic so the way the smoke comes is very scary yeah so the volcanic ash is one important uh, uh, source of particulate matter you have coal and uh, and sand uh you no know, sometimes uh, i don't know if you uh, have experienced this so during my early 20s or mid 20s when i was actually preparing for this exam so i was staying in delhi and the transition whenever the transition from summer to winter happens and this coal and also some of these trees have this typical you could smell them you know when you inhale that coal and you think oh my god and that because it immediately used to impact my started as a throat and then it immediately impacts my lung then it would mean you know two days of uh, medicine yeah so coal and is another source of particulate the can be considered as a source of particulate matter because it is still the size is very very small anthropogenic causes we have discussed this all soon we have discussed that incomplete combustion smog once again it's called anthropogenic because smoke is produced by human beings fly ash chemical mist etc okay